Hey everybody, so we're about to start learning about Fourier analysis. I know you're all excited. I've heard about some people being excited. Dude, this is so awesome. I just love learning about the waves. And then I'm just gonna go surfing because I'm a surfer dude. Um, Hermione, you're a polar bear. Do you actually know how to surf? Oh, I see. So you just kind of do body surfing? Yeah. On the ice. Yeah, dude, but that counts. Yeah. Thank you, Hermione. Well, I would have thought Slopey would be more inclined to do surf. You know, got slope and everything. I'm a penguin. Penguins don't surf. Fine. Whatever. All right, let's get started. Well, so we start with let B with an inner product be an inner product space. Suppose VK from k equal 1 to infinity is an orthonormal set. Set of vectors. Um, I.e., what that means is that if you take the inner product with any of these guys, it's either going to be 1 or 0. So, in other words, vk, vj is going to give you delta kj, the Kronecker delta symbol, which really means 1 if k equals j, and then 0 otherwise. And, and so you could think of the standard basic vectors in Rn as an example, but we'll typically be dealing with infinite dimensional cases. So, for example, and this is one of the main results of this section, is that in L2 of the interval negative pi to pi, this set is orthonormal. So um, I have these weird constants, 1 over square root of 2 pi, 1 over square root of pi. And uh, the cosines and the sines um, that forms an infinite set of functions this actually is an orthonormal set. Ortho ON for short for orthonormal. Also, you can use the exponentials e to the i n x such that n is in c. And then I have to divide by the square root of 2 pi. It is an orthonormal set. So we'll be verifying that in an exercise. So here's a major question. So given such an orthonormal set, uh, can you actually write a function as a linear combination of these things? So with a basis, a finite dimensional basis, uh, you know, you always could do that. But uh, here we've got an infinite series of things. So so, the, so let me just kind of tell you the goal. So the goal is for all f in L2 of negative pi to pi, I want to, to find ck such that f is equal to the summation of ck fk, where this is in my orthonormal set. And k equals 1 to infinity or whatever. And, and the question is, does, the, does this converge? Does it converge to the function? And, um, and I, what I mean by does it converge with respect to the inner product norm? And... 
is this a, have a limit? And then the next question, so that's number one, and then two, uh, does it converge to F? So that's the question. And then if it does, if this is true, and this could be another vector space, by the way. It could be just your general vector space. Thing. If, if so, we say that the orthonormal set is a complete orthonormal set. Orthonormal. And and often uh, we say often we say that it's a complete orthonormal basis, but it's not really a vector space basis because a vector space basis is always has to be a finite linear combination. You have to be able to write everything as a finite linear combination. And, and those kind of bases do exist, but we're talking about a special kind of basis where they're orthonormal and there's an infinite number of them. And it, you know, it's not really a basis as in the standard definition. So, um, so I'm going to show you some examples besides those. And I, uh, on L2 of negative 1 to 1, use Gram-Schmidt. Remember, that's the orthogonalization procedure to make vectors perpendicular. On L2 inner product and the linearly independent set, 1 x, x squared, and so on. And then you get what are called the Legendre polynomials. And, and if you, you know, they're not quite so simple. They're more, you know, the first one is a constant, I think, 1 over square root of 2. And then the next one would be some combination of those two, and then the next one would be some combination of these three. But then if you take the L2 and a product of them, you get zero. Anyway, so those are turn out to be important in some fields. And then in, in L2 of zero infinity, we have, we have the set x to the n times e to the negative x. And this is for n and n. Uh, well, actually, union zero. I think. Um, it, these uh, are called the Laguerre functions, and uh, and then uh, in L two of R, you can look at the set of. Uh, well, again, you have to use Gram Schmidt to kind of get the complicated combinations of these things, and so that you get them to be L2 orthogonal. And then if you uh, look at, in L2 of R, functions of this form, these are called the Hermite functions. And these are uh, I don't know really important. In fact, I don't know who you are. And yeah, in fact, uh, it, you get a, a set of Hermite functions, and then it turns out that uh, um, every one of these guys here, the uh, the the basis functions are eigenfunctions of a symmetric linear operator, it's actually a differential operator. 
And just like with a symmetric matrix, the eigen uh, vectors are perpendicular. That's one way of generating these orthogonal bases. And uh, these are important to physics, particularly quantum physics. The eigenvalues are like the energy levels, and these are kind of cool stuff. So anyway, so this this subject is useful in a lot of places, not just waves. Although I know that makes some of you guys really excited. Woo! Yeah, that's right, Hermione. I know it does. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's uh, first uh, do some state some theorems here. So the first one is, um, again, V is an inner product space. Vector space with an inner product. Suppose F, we always think of it as a function because most of our infinite dimensional vector spaces are function spaces. Um, it, so suppose F is in there and then and fk is an orthonormal set. And suppose f actually equals summation k equal 1 to infinity of ck times fk. And then the theorem is then you can actually calculate these constants by taking the inner product of f with fk. So let's look at the proof of that. Well, first of all, uh, um, that this equals that means that um, I, this sum converges to this function. So we're going to let Sn equal the sum from k equals 1 to n of CKFK, and we have that the L2 norm, I mean, or the inner product norm of F minus SN goes to zero as N goes to infinity, right? And so that means in particular that if you take the limit as N goes to infinity, of uh, the inner product of Sn with Fm for some m. This is the same thing as the inner product with F with Fm. Okay, why is that? Well, if you... Um, take the difference between the two um, this is equal to F, the F minus SN FM and then there's an inequality that involves inner products who knows what that is That's right, Fred. It's the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Excellent. So it's less than or equal to the norm of inner product norm of this times the inner product norm of Fm. But that's one because it's a orthonormal sequence. And that is right there goes to zero. So therefore, the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn Fm equals uh, f of. Great. All right, but on the other hand, let's actually compute. We can actually compute what the in, inner product of Sn with Fm is. Okay, and we're going to assume if n is greater than or equal to m. Okay, because n is going to infinity, so yeah, that's cool. Well, actually, we can compute this. So this is, let's write it down, summation of CK, FK from K equals 1 to N, and then 
inner product with Fm. Okay, now since they're orthonormal, well, first of all, it's an inner product, so you can pull out the constants. And this is 0 if k is not equal to m, and 1 if k equals m. So the only term that is going to show up there and ends bigger than that, see, is ck, cm. That's the only time it's 1. Okay? And so therefore, the limit as n goes to infinity of sn with fm, see, that's independent of n, as long as it's big enough, is equal to cm. And this equals to the inner product of f of fm, qed. So we have proven that theorem. Excellent. So you, you can always compute those constants if you know this is equal to that. That's great. So we'll be doing that with the trig functions um, later. All right, so now there's some important theorems. One is Bessel's inequality. Okay. If, you know, again, Fk is an orthonormal set in the See, we're going to do this for general inner product spaces with inner, and that way we can apply it to many different situations, one of which will be L2 of an inner product. So that'll be great. All right, so let's suppose we have that. Then for all F and V, summation from K equals 1 to infinity of absolute value of F in the product of f with fk, norm squared, or absolute value squared, converges. Hmm. Not obvious. And if you add that all up, that's less than or equal to the inner product norm of squared of f itself. Wow. So that's pretty cool. Well, um, so what's the idea of proof? Well, I'm going to let, again, let Sn be the nth partial sum. So k equals 1 to n of the, the sorry the coefficient times the orthonormal basis element. And let's uh, look at F minus Sn in a product with Fk. Well, all right. So just by the linearity of the inner product, you get this. But wait a minute, we just computed this over here. This is, um, this is equal to the CM, CK, M here equals the K. So that equals zero. Wow. So therefore, F minus SN is perpendicular to Fk for all, uh, that's if, oh, by the way, that's if n is greater than k. For all k is such that um, k is less than equal to n. In particular, that implies that f minus sn is perpendicular to sn. So then, that means we can actually um, do a computation of f minus sn plus sn in a product with f minus sn. Okay. And 
Notice this is the same thing as f with itself. But then, if you put this in here, you're, let's see, we're going to get, using that grouping, uh, we're going to have the inner product of f minus sn with uh, itself plus f minus sn with sn then plus one the other way around and then plus sn with itself okay great and notice that um, we get that these two middle terms are zero so you get that from the, what we just computed there, and so we get that the norm of f minus sn squared plus the norm of sn squared is um, equal to f squared. So therefore, sn squared is less than or equal to uh, f squared. And then use the order limit theorem, and we get that the limit as n goes infinity of the norm Sn squared is less than or equal to F squared. But what is the norm of Sn with itself? Then if you take the product, so this is again norm squared of Sn. <clears throat> and then the inter the inner product of Sn with itself is let me just plug in what it is summation of uh, I'll just put CK FK and again this is F FK from the first theorem and this is K equals 1 to N and then we have the same thing over here I probably should put a different index button, just so we're not confused. Okay. And then the constants come out and the linearity tells us this is if you take k and j less than and sum of both of those, and you put c k c j bar, because that's this part of the unit product, put f k f j, this is an orthonormal set, so this is zero if k is not equal to j. And it's 1 if k equals j. So the amazing thing is that it's sum of c k, c k bar, k equal 1 to n, which is summation of k equal 1 to n of c k squared, which is summation k equal 1 to n of, um, of f of f k squared. So the last inequality tells us that the limit then goes to infinity of summation k equal 1 to n of this. It's less than equal to. QED? That's exactly what we're trying to put. That is the Bessel inequality. And this is completely general. Any inner product space, any orthonormal set, you will always have that. This guy will always converge. Is an infinite series. Fantastic stuff. And finally, uh, there's another really important theorem called Parsible's inequality. Or Parsible's theorem, sorry. And I'm going to say let fk and k equal 1 to infinity be an orthonormal set in a good product space. Then F K is a complete orthonormal set if and only if for all F in V. 
So complete remembered means that every function can be written as a linear combination of the f case. It converges in norm to the f case, to the f. So this is true if and only if this guy right here, the Bessel's inequality, is an actually an equality. And we're going to examine that next time and see some examples. <laughs>